We have plenty of power to power the light when you open the door. You can see this is sitting in the garage. Put our key in. Make sure we're in neutral. Push the clutch in. We've got dash cluster. But just not enough power to turn over. Hi, and welcome back to Purple Color Life. In today's video, it is a cold one. We had actual temperatures of minus 13 last night. That's not including the wind chill. And then today we're in the single digits and as happens sometimes when it's this cold out, my little Ranger has a dead battery, won't start. It has a little bit of power, tries to turn over, but then the starter just clicks. So in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I get this truck started in this freezing cold weather like today. Um, and then I want you guys to leave comments down below because I know there's a lot of varied opinions on how to jumpstart a vehicle these days. One of the most important things that I've heard most recently is that it's not great to jumpstart one car with another car. The sensitive electronics in both vehicles, um, it's difficult to do that without damaging or potentially damaging those electronics. So one of the best things to use instead of a regular set of jumper cables that we've used for decades is something like a jump and carry, or if you're in the garage like this, a, a battery charger that allows you to jump start. Hanging here in my garage is what we've used forever to jump start vehicles, tractors, equipment. You've got two ends of a jumper cable a negative and positive on both ends. You connect them to the dead vehicle first, positive on positive, negative on negative. Then you connect them to the running vehicle and that would allow the power from the running vehicle to help start the dead vehicle. But like I said today, that is frowned upon. They say that it's not great for the electronics of the vehicles. So today's solution is one of these two options primarily. We've got dash cluster. So one of the things you can use, and you can see we've used ours a lot, this is the Jump and Carry 660. I'll put an Amazon link down below to this unit or one like it. I've used this thing all the time uh, for dead equipment. And the nice thing is, you can see I've got it charging right now. You can push this button to see the state of charge. We're in the charging area. I'll go ahead and unplug it. You just plug it into a regular extension cord with the female end plugging into the jump and carry. I've made quite a few videos about my daily driver, 2010 Ford Ranger, four cylinder, five speed. This has the 2.3 liter four cylinder engine. And right here you can see is our battery. Not exactly sure how old it is. I don't know if it's got a date on it. It is a Motorcraft battery. BXT. Five nine five hundred and forty cold cranking amps. Now, normally my truck starts fine, but when we get these really, really cold nights, that's hard on the battery. Obviously, it's discharging or it can't maintain a charge in that freezing cold temperature, and it makes it hard to start even for a small four cylinder engine like this. If you take a look at our Super Duty F350, this is the gas engine, but just like our previous diesel Super Duty, this truck has two batteries that really helps on cold days like today to make sure you have enough power to turn the starter and make sure the truck can start in these cold temperatures. Not only is the battery affected by the temperatures, but the engine is affected by the temperatures, takes a little bit more oomph to, to turn the engine over and get that cold fluids moving through, your oil's cold, everything's cold on a day like today. So one option, if you're sitting in a garage like this and you have access to power, you can use something like this battery charger. This is the Schumacher uh, 200 amp engine start, 40 amp boost, and six to two amp charge. So there's the unit, and I'll put an Amazon affiliate link to this down below. So if you're using something like this, let's review how you connect it up. You can see it is not currently plugged in and it's not connected to anything. Let's review the connection process. The connectors are located right here on the back of the unit. 
just want to remove them from there. Uncover the terminals of the battery. You can wipe these off, wipe them down. There's some spray you can put on them to clean them if you need to. Again, leave comments down below if you've done this differently than me or if you have other suggestions. I want to state right here at the beginning that before you use any of these jumping or starting pieces of equipment to start your own vehicles or other equipment, make sure, sure you follow the instruction manuals, instructions on how to do that properly and safely for both what you're using to start the equipment as well as the piece of equipment that you're starting. Do not let this video be a substitute for following those instructions that came with the things that you're working with. Since we're not jumping from another vehicle, where if you were jumping from another vehicle, you would connect your positive cable to the positive terminal. Then the negative, for years and years and years, I used to just connect it to the negative terminal. But they say to try to connect it somewhere else to the, the body of the vehicle that is bare metal. So I know that's to help protect the electronics and also so that if there is a spark, it's not near any gases that come off of the battery here. Um, since we're not charging that way though, we're going to connect the positive on to the positive terminal. Make sure you get a good grip there. And then the negative on to the negative. Remember, we're not plugged in yet with our battery charger. We made our connections. If you were looking for something bare metal to connect to, you might be tempted to find something like down here. But as you can see, this is right by the serpentine belt right beside a pulley that's spinning. Um, so you've got to be really careful where you would connect that negative terminal uh, of your jumper cables. That's a tricky thing to find bare metal that's not near something moving or something that gets too hot or something that's dangerous to reach to. Maybe right here if you could keep your connection away from this belt and pulley. But again, you're reaching your hand down there to take it off. That I think it's a dangerous spot. Let's go ahead and plug in our cord here. You can see I've got power coming in. Plug it in and the display lights up. Telling me the voltage is 12.4 which in this weather just isn't quite good enough. My battery type is standard. Currently it's on it says the battery percentage is 50%. Alternator's not running right now, so it's hard to tell that. There's the voltage. Okay, now we've started charging. We heard it click. Rate selection. If we were just charging, we'd use this one right here, and it would charge over time. You could be able to watch the battery percentage increase. If you wanted a boost, or you put it on 200 amp for engine start, we're going to give that a try and see if we can start the truck with the engine start going. Yes, that worked. Started, I stopped the charging process, so it's not charging right now. You can see none of these are lit up. Voltage 14.7 when running, battery is at 85%, alternator is at high. Okay, now it's saying the battery is at 13 and it's going down a little bit because remember we've turned this off, we're not charging it. Let's get this disconnected and I'll show you the other way, which is probably more common for me. Now this is probably best case scenario, right? You're sitting in the garage, easy access to power. You've got a battery charger and starter in your garage you can use to start the vehicle up. But let's be honest, that's not super typical. Most of the time your battery's dead because your car is parked at the airport or at work or somewhere else and you don't have access to power and a battery charger slash starter like this shoemaker one. 
And that's exactly why I like to keep the jump and carry ready. I actually carry this with me in the Ranger so that if I get a dead battery somewhere, I've got a secondary attempt to start it. Now, if this is stored in the back of the Ranger and you're, you've had the truck sitting outside for three days in these sub-zero degree temperatures, your battery in the Ranger is probably dead if it's like mine and it's a little bit older and the battery in the jump and carry might also be dead. So just be aware of that. Uh, this will be affected by the cold temperatures also, but it will hold up for a little bit of time maintaining a charge if it's fully charged. So starting with the positive side, I just unwrap enough and go ahead and connect it to the positive terminal of the battery. You can see these have nice wide jaws to clamp onto the battery. And this is where it gets a little tricky. If you need to make sure you follow the instructions that came with what you have. The jump and carry instructions that came with this pack stated to go ahead and connect this right to the negative terminal. Just like I've done right there. But I've noticed in the newer packs, they're saying to find a bare metal piece on the engine to connect to. And again, this is where you've got to be careful. I understand the desire to not have a spark here at the battery when there could be off gases that are flammable or dangerous or explosive. But at the same time, there aren't many spots, at least inside my vehicles, that there's a bare post to connect to. I know some cars do have a bare post uh, that's able to be connected for jump starting a vehicle. I'm not aware of one on this Ford Ranger. If there's one and I don't know where it is, make sure you leave that comment down below. You wanna make sure you use a jump and carry that's heavy duty enough for the piece of equipment you're starting. The 660 is appropriate for a battery of this cranking amp size. Once you're started and running, you want to disconnect. Reverse order, I'll take the negative off first. Take the positive off. Carefully coil it back around the jump and carry. You can see a nice mobile solution plenty of power to start our Ford Ranger on a sub-zero day like today. Now a note about our Jump and Carry 660 unit, it works great for the Ford Ranger, um, but it would not work on our previous 2005 F350 diesel. It didn't have enough amps to help start the diesel engine. So if you're looking at something like that, make sure you do your research, get a size that's appropriate for the vehicle that you need to start. The 660 is also perfect. I use it if the zero turn battery is dead, if the lawn tractor battery is dead. The jump and carry is a great solution for equipment like that. All right, so we're gonna let the Ranger run for a little bit. I'm gonna open the garage door. We do have the center door open for some ventilation here in the garage, but I'll open the door right behind the Ranger. Let this warm up for a little bit, let the battery charge for a little bit, and then it'll be ready to go the next time I need to start it. So yes, I think this is a way better solution to jumping a car the old way where you'd pull bumper to bumper, make sure you made the connections right, and with today's technology, possibly risk damaging the sensitive electronics in either one of those engines. I highly recommend, if you don't have one of these, look at picking one of these up. They also make a great gift for someone for Christmas or Father's Day or Mother's Day or any of those holidays where you're looking for a good gift idea for someone. They're not super lightweight, I will say, heavier than you would think they would be. Hopefully you found this video informative and entertaining. Please leave those comments down below. Absolutely everyone can benefit from reading down through the comments. If you're in a cold location like we are, stay warm, stay safe, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again the next time.